Welcome to Palm Sunday worship. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're joining us from home, and we're especially glad for those of you who are here in person. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. Throughout Holy Week, we join Jesus on the journey that leads to the cross. We hope that you will join us this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. for our Maundy Thursday service, on Good Friday at 7 p.m. for our Good Friday service, and on Easter Sunday at 1045 for our celebration of the resurrection. All of those services will be online only. Our contemporary service will be on Saturday evening will be both online and in person. This morning, uh, from 10 to noon, we are having a call vote for the purpose of calling an associate pastor. You are able to vote in Fellowship Hall or by driving up out in front. If you are worshiping from home this weekend, you can access our bulletin through a link on our Facebook page as well as our home page. And if you'll be communing from home today, please remember to have the elements prepared and place them on your home altar. In our prayers today, we pray for all those who have experienced tragedy this week, those uh, who have been in harm's way, all of those who have been impacted by the tornadoes, for those families mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who have been touched by the gun violence throughout the past several weeks. We pray for our leaders and for God's guidance of them. We pray for those who are experiencing coronavirus and for those who are on the front lines. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. If you have additional prayer concerns from home, we encourage you to share them in the comments area below. We're grateful for your ongoing support in so many ways. Your your support is helping us to shine Christ's light into the dark places of our world 
And we invite you to join us each morning at 1130 for a daily devotion. Our worship service this Palm Sunday begins with the Liturgy of the Palms. It is printed on the first page of your bulletin. If you are able, I invite you to stand. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. This morning begins a great week of the Christian year. During Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of the Lord's death and resurrection. With Christians throughout the world, we come together this week to call to mind and to express in word and action the center of the Easter mystery, our Lord's Passover, from death to life. Christ entered in triumph into the holy city to complete his work as Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise to new life. Today we commit ourselves to walk the way of the cross so that sharing in Christ's sufferings, we may be united with him in his risen life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to the 11th chapter of Mark. Hosanna in the highest. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage in Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of our Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You may, hand, you, you may hold up your palms uh, for this blessing. If you need any palms, um, does anybody need any palms? Everybody's okay. All right. Sovereign Lord, we thank you for these branches of palm. By your blessing, may they be for us signs of the victory of your son. May we who carry them in his name ever hail him as our Messiah. <clears throat> and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We hail you as the Son of God, our Savior and King. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we turn to Holy Scripture. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, Hosanna to the The Son Son of of David. David. In light of the length of the Passion reading today, I invite you to be seated. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until 
that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to Peter, Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. We sing stanza one of Hymn of the Day. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when they came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. 
Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You've heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again Peter denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time, and Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. We sing the second stanza of Beneath the Cross of Jesus. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You said so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? for he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! And Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him with, in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! 
They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The king of the Jews, and with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. We sing stanza three of Hymn of the Day. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Passion of the Lord. Praise to the one who comes in the name of the Lord.
Please pray with me. Dear precious God, may we return and release all our stuff that weighs us down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today's scripture places Jesus' passion front and center. It's a long reading. It's hard to listen to. The betrayal, the pain, the death. The hosannas of the triumphal entry now seem but an echo in our memory, but that's where I want us to go. I want us to go back to that first gospel reading, to Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and I want us to think about this question. Why did Jesus leave the temple and go to Bethany? That question sounds a lot like one of those why did the chicken cross the road kind of jokes. But my question isn't a joke. I think the answer to that question and the implications of that answer hold the key to our Holy Week this year. You remember what happened, right? Jesus is in a parade. He's riding a borrowed colt. It's a march, a movement. We call it the triumphal entry. People are in front of and behind Jesus. They're shouting their hosannas. They're throwing down their palms in their cloaks for him to ride on. They're rolling out the red carpet. There's excitement and anticipation. This Jesus thing is really going somewhere. Something big is happening. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He enters the temple. He looks around at everything, and he leaves. He does nothing. He says nothing. He just leaves. He goes to Bethany. It's a strange and anticlimactic ending to the triumphal entry. It sounds like Jesus is retreating, getting out of town. What's that all about? Mark is the only gospel that says Jesus entered the temple, looked around, and left. So why did Jesus leave the temple and go to Bethany? The gospel tells us why. Jesus left the temple as it was already late. So that got me to wondering, what if this is about something more than just the time of day? What if Jesus is late, getting somewhere, or doing something? What might Jesus be late for? I have an idea about that, but I need you to hang with me a minute. I think Jesus was late, getting the colt back to its owner. Here's why I say that. There's another unique aspect about Mark's account of the triumphal entry. He is the only one to say that Jesus promised to return the colt to its owner. They all agreed that the colt was either borrowed or its owner but, or found. But only Mark speaks about Jesus returning the colt. Jesus sends two disciples to borrow this colt and hold them. And he told them if anyone asked why they were taking the colt, they were to say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. And that's what they did. So what if that's why Jesus left the temple? Maybe he left so that he could keep his promise and follow through on what he said he would do. Maybe this is about Jesus being true to himself and keeping his word. What if this is about Jesus staying centered within himself, despite what the week holds for him? What if returning the colt is a metaphor for us as we enter into and walk through this holy week? What might returning the colt mean for us throughout this week? It's an image or metaphor to ponder, and it raises a couple of questions. First, what do you need to return this week? What do you need to release or let go of? We all have stuff that we've carried around with us for far too long. It's no longer able to take us anywhere or give us life. It's just baggage we carry that continues to weigh us down. It impoverishes life. It corrupts our heart. 
What do you need to let go of, release, and return this week? Is it a grudge or resentment, anger, fear, disappointment and regret, guilt, envy? Maybe you need to return to being in, in control, having to be right, a need for approval, perfectionism. I don't know what it is for you, but I'm convinced that we all have our stuff. Maybe Holy Week is the time to return and release it all to God, trusting that God can do something with this stuff when we were never able to. And here's my second question. What do you need to return to? What if we returned to joy, hope, beauty, truth, and honesty? What if we came back to justice, mercy, forgiveness? What if we reclaimed the dignity and holiness of each human life? What if we recenter ourselves in peace and courage? What if we returned to love of neighbor, self, and enemy? Take that image of returning the colt with you this week. Take it wherever you go. Bring it to whatever you do. Let it be present as you live your life and as you engage people in relationships, whether in your family, at work, at school, at the grocery store. Returning the cult is how Holy Week begins. Returning to God is the promise of how this week will end. Look around at everything and then go return the colt. Amen. If you're able, I invite you to stand for the prayers. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, gracious Lord, loving Savior, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the triumphant entry and for the journey that leads you this week, not to be hailed with a crown of gold, but with a crown of thorns. We give you thanks for your enthronement on the cross. We give you thanks for giving your life in our place. Allow us to journey with you this Holy Week, contemplating the depth and breadth of the gift of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are mindful as we gather in worship this morning that so many have been touched by tragedy this week. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, whether in the tornadoes or the shootings, we pray that you would be present with the first responders, that you would be with all those families who are mourning the loss of loved ones, so many in such senseless tragedy. We pray for all those who are struggling with coronavirus and those families who mourn the loss of loved ones. Surround all who are hurting in so many ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for this community of faith, and we pray that you continue to guide, direct, and uh, nudge us into the mission to which you've called us, to be your heart and your hands in, in this community and in the greater communi Cleveland community and throughout, uh, throughout the area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we gather in worship today, we are mindful of all those in special need or circumstance. We pray for all those in our ongoing prayer, prayers, and this morning we especially lift up Bill and Bob Bannum. We pray for the Kennedy family, for Frank Deal, Mike Edwards. We pray for Eleanor, Dale Gabor, Phyllis Hagen, Drew Hubbard, Stacy Anderson, Jeremiah, Dana Lutz, Ed Masters, Marlene and Marsha, Mitch and Lindsay, Tracy Nedelka, Carolyn Newmore. We pray for Lizzie Perkins' family. We pray for Ga Gabriella Raymond, for Jim and Tom Reynolds, for Linda Spina, Ginny Garkey, Pat and Don Mitchell, Jean Raymond, Judy Fulton, Jim Jacosh, 
the John family, for Tom Maurer, Lynn Moritzen, Amy Rolf, Valerie Schultz, Marilyn Spina, Jeff Todia, and those who we name now aloud or in the quiet of our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the invitation you extend to all to that heavenly banquet where there is no beginning and there is no end, where we dine with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a safe, distanced greeting of peace with those worshiping nearby. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you. Holy God, mighty and immortal, through Christ our Lord, you bid us return to you and be renewed, that your justice may shine like the sun, and the poor of the earth be lifted up. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Remember on the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering, we pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please be seated. I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. A closing hymn this Palm Sunday. Go to dark Gethsemane, stanzas 1, 3, and 4. Before I dismiss you, um, if you haven't voted, please vote on your way out in the fellowship hall. Jesus commissioned us for what purpose? To go in into the world, the world sow the, the good, good news, and, and grow, grow in, in faith. faith. Go now in peace to accomplish Christ's mission in the world. Thanks be to God. <laughs>